Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. Hello students, welcome back to my channel Physics KSSM Form 4 for DLP classes with me, Cik Wasnita of SMK Bagan Jaya. I hope everyone will feeling great as we are going to begin with chapter 3, a new chapter on gravitation. And I believe you all know the man who is inside my slide. Yes, very good. He is Sir Isaac Newton, father of the modern physics. So if you are good and ready to go for today's lesson, we will begin with the first content standard on Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation, Part 1. Well, if you are a new visitor, feel free to subscribe into my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you will be among the first who get notified whenever I'm uploading my latest videos on physics. Okay students, so what will be our topics of discussion today? We will begin with the first learning standard on how to explain Newton's universal law of gravitation where f equal to g m1 m2 divide r squared. Alright? So, I believe you are all familiar with his name, Sir Isaac Newton, a very well-known physicist. And in one fine day around 1667, he lies down under a tree reading his book, where suddenly an apple dropped off. In my case, a lemon. So, Isaac Newton made an observation, there must be something going on. There must be some kind of attraction between the apple and the earth. And in addition to that, he also made an observation on the movement of the moon orbiting the earth. Same goes to the apple and the, uh, and the earth. He also thinks there must be some kind of force of attraction which prevents this moon from drifting away from its root while orbiting the earth. So, do you feel excited to discover more? I believe your answer is yes. So, come and join me. Okay students, let us begin with our first activity which you may find in your textbook on page 78. In this activity, we are going to respond to a few questions in order to figure out the existence of gravitational force in between two bodies in the universe. Look at the boy, he's jumping happily. Yay, it's a school holiday. So you can see that every time the boy is jumping, he will return back to the ground. So the question is, what force causes the boy to return to the ground? So can you name the force? Very good, the name of the force is gravitational force. How about the next question, number two? Okay, now you can see a molecule, and A molecules remain in the atmosphere without escaping to the outer space. So they are lingering around the earth. And the question is, what force act between the molecules in the atmosphere and the earth so yes again it is due to earth gravitational force and how about the third question okay you can see there is a moon revolve around the earth without drifting away from its orbit I believe you all know that this is due to the Earth exert a pulling force on the Moon. But the question is, does the Moon also exert a force on the Earth? So students, what do you say? Yes, very good. The answer is yes. Not only the Earth is pulling the Moon towards it, but at the same time, the Moon also exerts a pulling force on the Earth. So both are pulling towards one and another, okay? And let's check on the fourth question. Wow, look at the scenery. An autumn, beautiful, isn't it? A leaf fall from a tree. The question, are both leaf and earth experience the same gravitational force? So your answer, yes, it is. Both leaf and earth experience the same magnitude of gravitational force okay how about b what is the effect of these forces to the movement of the fallen leaf and the earth so what do you say so because of this force of attraction which uh, exists between the fallen 
leaf and the earth so they will move towards one and another they will attract to one and another and the last question to be think of why does a fallen leaf move towards the ground Okay, students, earlier in B, we understand that there is a pulling force. There is a force of attraction or a gravitational force exists between the fallen earth and the earth. But in reality, it's very impossible for us to see the earth move towards the leaf. So we only can see that the leaf move towards the earth where it will fall down. So how to explain this situation? Yes, this is due to the difference in their masses. As the mass of the Earth is very much larger, thousand times bigger compared to the mass of the leaf, so a gravitational force does not have an apparent effect on the Earth movement. Okay, as such, as we are standing on the Earth, we only observe the leaf falling towards the ground. Okay. So this is how we understand there is a gravitational force exists in between of two bodies in the universe. Okay students, so in the previous activities from the four questions, we have understand that gravitational force exists in between two bodies in the universe. So what is this gravitational force actually refers to? In physics, gravitational force defined as a universal force which act or exist in between any two bodies in the universe and also the magnitude of a force in between these two bodies are the same or equal for example if you look between the sun and the earth uh, there is gravitational force acting between them of the same magnitude so do with the sun and the moon and also the moon and the earth so back on Newton's story on 1667, where he made an observation on the apple which fall vertically towards the ground and also the moon which orbiting the earth, only 20 years later he come up with this law, where Newton say a gravitational force is directly proportional to the product of the masses of the two bodies, where F directly proportional to M1 and M2, and gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the centers of the two bodies where f inversely proportional to r squared which means that newton say that when the masses of the two body increases the force of attraction or the gravitational force acting between them will be stronger will be higher bigger whereas when the distance between these two bodies are further, the gravitational force acting will be weaker. And students, these two relationships, when we combine them, this will be the product. Where finally, it is formulated as F equal G M1 M2 divide R2. Where F means gravitational force between two bodies. M1 refers to the mass of the first body. M2, mass of the second body, and R is the distance between the centers of the two bodies, while G is gravitational constant of 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And this is what we call as a Newton universal law of gravitation, where again it states that the gravitational force between the two bodies is directly proportional to the product of the masses of both bodies and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the centers of the two bodies as shown in this figure. Well, students, I guess you have understand Newton's universal law of gravitation where it say that Gravitational force is directly proportional to the masses of the two bodies and inversely proportional to the square of distance of the center of both bodies. Now, more important, let us check how to apply this equation of F equal G M1 M2 divide R squared. Look at example 1, which you can find in your textbook on page 80. 
Wow, we have a durian, the king of the fruit. Yummy. So you have to calculate the gravitational force acting in between the durian and the earth as it falls down, particularly downwards. So you are given with all this information where M1 is the mass of the earth, M2 is the mass of the durian, and R is the distance between the center of the durian and the center of the earth where G is gravitational constant. So we are looking for F, gravitational force. So what is the applicable formula? Again, F equal G M1 M2 divide R squared. Now you just need to do the substitution. Yes. So you will end up with F of 19.63 Newton. So this is the magnitude of gravitational force which acting in between the Earth and the durian. And now let's check for example 2. Again, this one you can find in your textbook, page 81. Okay, a rocket at the launching pad, as you can see here, experienced a gravitational force of 4.98 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton. So the question is, what is the mass of the rocket? So in example 2, we have to find what is the mass of the rocket. Again, this is all the given information, where F is 4.98 times 10 5 Newton. This is the mass of the Earth, and this is the mass of the rocket. We label it as M2. R is the distance between the center of both Earth and rocket, and G is the gravitational constant. So, this is the formula which we apply, and this is the substitution. So, the mass of the rocket will be 5.07 times 10 to the power of 4 kilogram. So, easy, right? Well, what do you think of our first lesson? Interesting? I believe you will agree with me. So, students, today we have discussed how to explain Newton's universal law of gravitation where gravitational force is, yes, directly proportional to the masses of the two bodies and inversely proportional to the square of distance of the center of both bodies. So, would you like to join me again in my next video? And I hope that you can give me your uh, suggestion or any recommendation in order to improve our sessions. So, with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to stay tuned in my channel and see you with the next lesson on Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation Part 2. Till then, Assalamualaikum, take a good care of yourself and have a pleasant day ahead. Bye-bye for now.